Mayhem, a fitting description for pretty much any scene involving Academy City's most powerful Espot. We've seen Accelerator demonstrate his overwhelming power time and time again, from taking explosions on the chin, to practically turning someone inside out by reversing their blood flow, or converting the very air around him into plasma like nobody's business. But how does he do all that? In this video, we'll explore how his abilities work, delving into the underlying mathematics that make Accelerator practically invincible, and formally prove why it's probably a good idea to be just a tiny bit afraid of him. The power which Accelerator is most well known for is his ability to manipulate vectors. In order to understand what it means to manipulate a vector, we first have to understand what a vector actually is. It'll be quick, I promise. Simply put, a vector is a quantity which has both a magnitude, that is, a size, written here as r, and a direction, expressed here as the symbol theta. This is just convention, but you could really call them whatever you want. We can see that the r value describes the size or length of the arrow from tip to tail and the theta represents the angle our line makes with the positive x-axis. If that seems a little bit confusing, don't worry, there's another way to think about it. We can write the vector in terms of two values, x and y. These numbers describe a point on our 2D axis, and the vector itself is the arrow pointing to it from the origin. Once again, we're just describing how far and which way. With this, we can describe any number of two-dimensional vectors. But Accelerator lives in a 3D world, so we need to extend our description to 3D space. To do that, we need to refine our description of the direction by introducing a third parameter, phi, which works in a similar way to theta and describes instead the angle that our vector makes with a positive vertical z-axis. Or, like last time, we could use an equivalent xyz representation to describe the vector. Now we have all that we need to describe the details of pretty much any object that Accelerator would be likely to encounter. With that out of the way, we can start looking at how Accelerator's vector control actually works. You have to first understand that Accelerator is basically a walking supercomputer with the ability to make complex calculations in fractions of a second. Part of what makes Accelerator so untouchable is his ability to subconsciously reverse any vector he deems harmful, be it the sun's UV rays, which explains why he's practically albino, or a speeding bullet. There are a few ways to consider the transformation of reversing a vector. We can see that one way would be to rotate the vector by an angle of 180 degrees, but this gets a bit more complicated in 3D. Perhaps more natural, however, is to consider the x and y representation of our vector, in this case, 2, 2. Then the reversal can be seen as simply multiplying our coordinates by minus 1. This method is a very fast computation and is likely what's happening in the background for Accelerator. Now that we understand how this works for a single vector, let's see what this would look like in practice. The vector reversal ability forms what is effectively an omnidirectional shield around Accelerator just above his skin at all times. We can imagine any number of incoming vectors headed towards Accelerator, but they can never cross the threshold of this barrier and are instead reflected off the shield, heading in the reverse direction. But Accelerator's abilities aren't just limited to defense, and this is where things get kind of crazy. While it's not 100% clear whether Accelerator is just sort of instantaneously rewriting reality, it's probably more intuitive to consider the case where he is instead able to rapidly apply a perfectly calculated vector to obtain the result he wants. Let's see how this would happen. Consider this scene where Accelerator shoots himself but redirects the bullet. Let's break it down. We have a vector traveling in a specific direction, the bullet's velocity and we want to change this vector to travel in a new direction with a new size. The idea here is to apply some currently unknown vector in order to arrive at the velocity that we want. We can do this using addition. In other words, v1 plus v3 is equal to v2. To better understand this, you could imagine tracing the path drawn by the vectors, and so adding them together is like following a set of instructions on where to move. If following a vector from base to tip is the same as addition, we can also understand subtraction to be tracing a vector the opposite way. So minus v2 takes us back to the start. Now our equation should start to make sense and we can play around to determine what kind of calculation accelerator needs to perform to find the right vector. Rearranging, we find that v2 minus v1 is equal to v3. Remember v2 is positive here, so that means we should trace from base to tip. Now minus v1 means that we should trace out the vector v1 backwards from tip to tail from where we are at the moment. And we see that following these steps does indeed lead us to the same point as if we had followed the red vector. In other words, the velocity that needs to be applied is given by subtracting the bullet's current velocity from the velocity we want it to have. We just take our two vectors in xy format, say 2, 4, and minus 1, 3, and compare them element-wise. 
In other words, the first entry of the resulting vector is 2 minus minus 1. And the second is 4 minus 3, giving us 3, 1. But the wildest part about Accelerator's skill set is that his computational ability allows him to not just control one vector at a time, but entire fields of them, opening up practically limitless options. Let's take a look at some of them. Accelerator could generate tremendous impulses in specific directions by redirecting the velocity vectors of a particular material, such as fluids like water, to whichever direction he chooses, creating a tsunami. On a smaller scale, reversing the direction of blood flow. We've also seen that he's able to do the same to manipulate wind currents, creating tornadoes in multiple instances and even using them to fly. Since electric fields are at their core vector fields, he can effectively control the flow of electricity. To do this, he simply needs to adjust the field to behave as though there was an electric charge present. We see him use this ability in one form to manipulate a person's bioelectricity to hurt them. These extraordinary feats are just the tip of the iceberg. His capabilities extend even further, such as manipulating sound waves, gravitational forces, and even mind control, such as reconstructing memories or an entire personality. Such overwhelming power not only cements Accelerator's status as Academy City's strongest esper, but also gives us insight into the fundamental mathematical concepts that underpin both his world and ours. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and feel free to check out the links in the description below.